Okay. All right. This is our um, fifth Esperanto class, July 16th, 2020. Ron Glossop, take it away. Well, thank you very much, Rodana, for getting it all set up for us. I do want to begin by going back to our previous lesson, lesson two, and talk just a bit about those exercises that were given at the end of the course, because we did not have time to go through that and make sure that everybody is with us. So I think we need to start there, but maybe we even should begin with asking, does anybody have any questions about anything? Well, I have some questions about lesson three, but I like your idea of finishing up lesson two first. Okay. Let's do that. Okay, let's do that. And then we'll go to you for lesson three. Okay. On lesson two, there are 20 exercises. Did any one of them give anybody any difficulty? Well, there's one I would like to talk about. And that is number 14. Number 14 says the English is her old friend didn't write. Now the problem here has nothing to do with Esperanto and everything to do with English. <laughs> the, problem, the problem is that second word old. Old, yeah. Her old friend. How are we going to put that into Esperanto? I said Malyuna. Malnova? Yes, Malnova or Malyuna. And that <laughs> is the problem. In English, old can mean somebody that is along in years, or it could mean someone that is not new. So when you translate that, from English into Esperanto, your big problem is how you translate that second word. You know, the first word is Shia. You know that the third word is Amico. But what is the second word? <laughs> and the answer we only is, know the word for new. We don't know the other word, do we? Do we know but, the word? I mean, I'm not sure because I don't no. always remember what came up in which lesson. Yeah. But, we, but that's a good point. We Maybe only know the new, word for new. Yeah. The word Nova for new. Yeah. So, Mal Nova would be an old friend in the sense of someone whom you've known for a long time, while Mal Yuna would be someone who is along in years. So, her old friend could be Shia Malnova Amico, or it could be Shia Malnova, Maluna Amico. And then, of course, the rest is Ne Scribis, and the critical thing there is the past tense. So that ending on Scribas, Scribis, has to be I S. Yes. yes. Does anyone have any questions about any of those 20 sentences? I guess I'd, I'd like to go over um, 15. You well, will the, meet their old friends. Okay, that's with old again. <laughs> I, I have, well, I, I use Malnova. To me, that's not a problem because I didn't know that other word. <laughs> okay. So I have V. Ron Contos, Ili. Ilion, I L I A J N, that Mal Novan Amicoin. Amicoin. Mal Novine. No, Mal Novine. Amicoin. Well, very good. Except, Is that right? And the second word, Rencontos. Ron, Ron, Ren, Ren. Oh, yeah, I said it wrong. R E N. Rencontos. 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 Elian Malnovine Amicoin or Malunine Amicoin. Can you spell that word that means um, not young? What's that word you're saying? Yuna, J U N A, is young. 
Oh, internet, okay. I don't know that word. That J in Esperanto is pronounced like a Y. So right. J-U-N-A is pronounced Yuna, meaning young. Yuna. And Mao Yuna would be old in the sense of along in years. Okay. Well, for 14 and 15, I would argue, though, Malnova is the correct one. Otherwise, in the exercise in English, they probably would have said elderly friends. Well, maybe. <laughs> no, I think that's one of the problems with English. You, you're right. right. Technically, elderly would be better, but very often in the everyday English, one just has old friends. But you can be an old friend and not be elderly. Yes. But the English won't make that clear. Do we have any other questions? I think that's very good that we talked about 14 and 15. Are there any other of these 20 questions on lesson two that we should talk about? Well, if not, let's then move on to lesson three. And Donna, you said you had some questions there. Well, my question, my question, you know, I did have trouble pronouncing some of the words. Okay. Like, like engineer, e e e engineer. E e e e In say it again. Engine engineer. Ingeniero. 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 Okay. Ingeniero. Yes, because you got to remember in Esperanto, every vowel is a new syllable. Right. Ingeniero. And um, porcelain? Porcelano? Porcelain? Porce it's because the C is S T, right? That's right. Porcelain. Porcelano. 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 Say it again. Porcelano. 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 And the word for week? Some, how do you print it? Semino. I. A, A J is I, right? A J is pronounced I. Exactly right. Semino. And the and Magoi de la Semino, the days of the week. In the United States, we would probably begin with Dimancho for Sunday. But many Europeans begin with Monday. <laughs> so, Lundo, Mardo, Mercredo, Jaudo, Vendredo, Sabato, Dimancho. And then how do you say, well, then my other questions are on the, the, the lessons, the questions like, how do you say my brother will run in the morning? Is in the morning an adverb that describes run? Is it Very just me alfrato matena kuros? Very good question. It is. And, and it points out a big problem in English. Why do we say things like, I will see you on Monday in January? Why is it on for the day of the week and in for the day for the month? So English prepositions are very flexible and very difficult for non-English speaking people. So in the morning, the, what you do in Esperanto, you use the General preposition, yeah, spelled J E. Oh. oh. So, J -E. It be, yeah. Well, I guess you could use N. You could use N because in S wrong, N means within. So, within the morning would be okay. But even better would be, yeah. So, mia frato, 
Kuros Ye La Mateno. Another possibility would be Dum, during. Dum La Mateno. Why not just translate it as an adverb? Yeah. Morning. Yes, like that's what I did. I said Mia Frato Matena Kuros. Mm -hmm. Morning. Yes, that's very good. Yeah. In fact, that's one of the things that happens over and over again in Esperanto. And one of the main points of lesson three is that you use adverbs very often when in English you would have prepositional phrases. And this is a good example right here. In the morning, you can just say matena. In January, januare. <laughs> in March, Marte. Vendreda would be Friday. <laughs> so, Donna, do you have other questions? I do, but maybe other people. I don't want to yeah. dominate. Maybe others well, have but other I think questions. Your questions are very good questions. So, I'm ready <laughs> to stay with you. Well, <laughs> well how, number eight, he loves her. Good. So, il, amas, chion. No, li. Li. Oh, he, no. Li, li. Amas. Oh, there, I, I was, uh, what do you call that when you switch your letters? Yeah. Li. I was, li, amas, chion. Chin. 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 You don't Sheen. need an O there because that's a pronoun, not a noun. Ah, Sheen it's a pronoun. pronoun. Oh, yeah. All right. So that is a tricky thing because from one point of view, grammatically, pronouns are nouns. <laughs> but, but there is a big difference in Esperanto. The pronouns are not nouns. They don't end in O. So it's, so spell her S with a hat. <laughs> I, uh, I you need, it. is it just, you do put the N for the object, right, right, right. Yes, that you do need the N for the object. But you don't need the, you don't need to turn it into a noun. <laughs> I turned right. it into a noun. Li Amas Sheen. Now, as long as we're on number eight, let's look at also number nine. Mm -hmm. What do what we have? Li amas sheen frat frat frat. What did I do? Fratinon. 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 But you have to have sheon. Yeah, I said sheon. Li amas sheon fratinon. Bone. That's just exactly right. Li amas sheon fratinon. How about number 10? Becca. Beck. Numero Beck. She loves him. Anyone? She amas li sin sin. She amas lean. L I N. Oh, L I N. Yeah, Li is the third person masculine and then you have to put an n on because it is a direct object she amas lean well maybe we should ask if anyone else has questions we've been giving down a chance Maybe somebody else has a question about one or another of these exercises. I or any not, points that have come up. I wouldn't mind if you just 
ran through them because I really was struggling with them. Okay, <laughs> fine. I think that's what we should do. And that's what I will do. So let's do that. Okay. Number one, Mian Fraton, La Vis Mia Patrino. Obviously, what they want you to see here is the word order in Esperanto is not necessarily the same as the word order in English. You have to see that those first two words are not the subject of the sentence because the letter N on the end tells you, oh, this is the object of the verb. So how do we translate it into English? My mother washed my sister. Say my mother again. washed my, mother my washed brother. My, sister. Um, my mother washed my brothers. My brother. Brother. My brother. Uh, yes. My, my mother my wife. washed my brother. My mother washed. So the point here is to see that Mia Patrino, even though it comes at the end of the sentence, is the subject of the sentence because it does not have ends on it. The first two words, Mian Fraton, are not the subject, even though they come first. Now, you could, you could translate it by using a passive voice. You could say, my brother was washed by my mother. That would preserve the word order and also preserve the meaning. Mm. But the point that they're making is in Esperanto, you've got to pay attention to the endings and not to the order of the words. That's the point. Okay, let's look at number two. Instruistoin Vine fratinoi nei vidis. I wrote, our sisters saw your teachers. Good. Bone. Yes. Our sisters is the subject. Saw is a verb and your teachers is the direct object as indicated by the letter N. So when we put it into English, our sisters saw your teachers, or if you wanted to preserve the word order, you could say your teachers were seen by our sisters. But that's not the usual way you would do it you would change the word order and make it regular English. Our sisters saw your teachers. Okay, now we've already talked a little bit about number three, but I don't think we talked about the whole thing. So how will we translate number three into Esperanto? Mia Frato Matene Kuros. Bone. Matena, 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 not a Matena. Yes, or you could put the Matena at the end, or you could put it in the middle, like you did. Either way. Oh, our lesson said to put it before the verb. Our lesson said, didn't it say? No. I thought our lesson said you put the adverb in front of the verb. Usually that is the case, but you can in order to emphasize things differently. In Esperanto, the word order is important for the emphasis. So, in fact, if you wanted to emphasize in the morning, you would put it first. Matene, mia frato curas. So, where are you going? In Esperanto, the word order helps you to know what's being emphasized. The farther front it is in the sentence, the more important it is for understanding the point. Okay, let's go to number four. His friend replied warmly. Mia amico varme respondis. Bone. 
Yes. Lea amico varme respondis or respondis varme. So numero clean, the brown pen writes well. Anyone? I wrote la bruna plumo scribas bone. Bone. La bruna plumo scribas bone. Numero says, the friendly girl runs badly. Someone? La amica cannabino malbona curas. Bone. I have. Uh, amica cannabino malbona curas, or it can be curas malbona. How about la varma cannabon? I don't know. Farmer? I couldn't find friendly, so I used warm. Well, uh, I think friendly has to be amica. Oh, okay. Right. It's the uh, adjective from friend, right? It was, I just took the adjective verb of the word friend we had learned. We had learned amico, so I just turned amico into an, ad, into an adjective. Yes. That's exactly the way to do it. And it couldn't be la amikina? Can I be no? No, because then that you're putting the female part into the adjective rather than the noun. Yeah. It's got to so be used to, no. I'm so used to my adjectives agreeing with my nouns. I, well, I that's <laughs> true, but that's you're, not the you're working too uh, hard. <laughs> yes, no, that's not the case with regard to the gender. Okay. Forget about the gender. Okay, number seven. Our father strolls in the evening. I try that. Uh, knee, knee is R, right? Knee. Nia. Nia. Yes. Nia patro. Vespere. Promenas. Bone. Nope. What was the middle rough word? Vespere. Vespere. Roll the R, right? Making Vespere into an adverb. But you could also say Dum la Vespero. Or En la Vespero. So you have alternatives here. You can use the adverb vespere or the prepositional phrase dum la vespero or the prepositional phrase in la espero. Those are all correct in Esperanto. What was the verb? Promenas. Okay, with the AS? Yes, because it's present, present tense. tense. Yeah. Okay. Strolls. Yeah, if it was past tense, strolled, then it would be is at the end. Promenis. Okay. If it's future, promenos. So it's the last two letters that tell you what tense it is. As is always present tense. Is is always past tense. Os is always future tense. And I believe that's directly from the Latin. Okay, the Oka demando, the eighth question. He loves her. Li amas shin. Bone. Li amas shin. Nun, now, numero now. Number nine, he loves her sister. Who wants to try that? Me, I'm a Shian Fratino. Fratino. Yes, Bone. Me, I'm a Shian Fratino. 
La Deca de Mando, the tenth question. She loves him. She amas lean. Bone. She amas lean. Exactly right. Dec Uno. The first man loves the second woman. La Unua Viro Amas La Duan Vir Enon. Bone. Tre bone. Yes, you remembered the N for the direct object and not just the noun, but also the adjective. Bone. Dec, dec do. The second woman hates the first man. La Duan Verono Malamas La Unuan Viron. Okay. Bone. La Dua Verino Malamas La Unuan Viron. Okay, deck three, we've got a difficult issue here because that last word, cakes, where do you find it in our lessons? You've got to go all the way back to lesson one. Cuckoo. Cuckoo, yes. So what is the I remember answer? that one. <laughs> Two boys first asked for three Cakes. Someone? I wrote do canaboy unua demandis tri ku coin. I, I wrote. No, no tri ku coin. Isn't it tree on? Don't you have to turn three into an ad adjective like a. Only if it's third. If it's an. Ordinal number three, you don't need an ending. When you oh. add numbers, uno, do, three, clark, means, uh, step, oh. now, that, when you use a number itself, you don't put an ending on oh. it. You only put the ending on for the ordinal numbers, first, second, third. Then it becomes an adjective. Unua, dua, tria, clara, clina. That's a very So, important. Bob, would you repeat it? Would you repeat it, Bob, the answer? Yeah. This is what I wrote. Do kanaboy unua demandis tri kukoin. Yeah, unua. Okay. Inua, adverb. For, for the verb, uh, I think it should be petis. Yes. I'm sorry. I didn't catch what he said. Oh, it should be petis. I had to mind this too. That's when you have the question. Yes, because oh, it's right. past tense. Petty. Yes. So it's demandi, not petty. I mean, it's petty, not demandi. Three kukoin. Yo, that clar. In the second place, they asked for lemonade. Dua do a ilia petitis limonadon. Bone. Not ilia, ili. Oh, not ili. Uh, oh, just ili, because it's a they. That's the they, ili. not that. It's not theirs. Can you say that again? I'm sorry. Dua ili petis limonadon. And in fact, Ugh. I would say it would be less confusing if the English, instead of saying in the second place, just said secondly. <laughs> then it would be an adverb even in English. Secondly, <clears throat> okay, that green, the shop 
makes bad brown bread. La putico havis brunon panon. Say it again. La butico havis brunon panon. Faras. Faras. Albona. Yeah, the, the verb has to be faras, not havas. Okay. Faras. Malbonan Brunan Panon. Is that Brunan Panon with an N on the end? Yes. Okay. The N has to go on, on Malbona, on Bruna, and Pano. The N has to go on the direct object and all the adjectives that go with it. Okay. Leo? Instead of butico, uh, remember the accent is on the second to last syllable, so butico. Okay. Yes. Okay. Bona puncto. It's in Esperanto, the accent is always on the next or the last syllable. So butico. Okay. Numero dexes. The shop makes brown bread badly. I'll try that. <clears throat> La botico faras um, malbone uh, bruna on pano. pano. Yes. Bruna on pano. And Malbona can come at different places in that sentence. La Botico Malbona Faras Brunan Panon. La Botico Faras Malbona Brunan Panon. Oh, even at the end. La Botico Faras Brunan Panon Malbona. Adverbs can get placed different places, depending on what you want to emphasize. Yeah. And I, I think it was correctly pointed out, that usually means that it comes right before the verb, but not always. Okay. Numero decep. 60 minutes are one hour. I wrote, says Dick, minu toy estas unu oro. Bone, bone. The important point here is you don't have any ends because you don't have any direct objects. You've got estas. And that means there is no direct object. Ses dick minu toy estas unu oro. Numero dec oak. 24 hours are one day and night. Do dec cavar horo horo horoi. Estes unu estes unu tago kai nocto. Bone. Yes. Bone. Do dec clar horoi estes unu tago kai nocto. Dec now. Seven days are one week. Dec tag sep tagoi estes unu semino. Bone, tre bone. Septagoi estas unu semino. Kainun la dudeca exerzo. The third boy is my second son. La, la, tr la tria canobo esta mi dua filo. Bone. 
Tres bone. La tria, canabo, estes, mia, dua, filo. Bone. Now, can we count together up to 20? Wait a second. Yes. Brenda had asked to go through all 20. Any questions, Brenda, about any of those? No, but that was very helpful. Thank you. That was helpful. This is very challenging for me. Maybe we should go through all, all of them from lesson two, too. Okay. <laughs> well, we can but, do that. But, I have a question on number 13. Okay, the number word, 13, that's the word three. first. Lesson three, question 13. Two yes. boys first asked for three cakes. Is first yes. an adjective or an adverb? It's an adverb. So it's do canaboy unue? Yes. Unue, okay. Yeah, and notice in English, you could even change the word or say first two boys asked for three cakes. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to emphasize that was the first thing that they did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. But the adverb can get placed wherever it needs to be placed in order to emphasize what you want to emphasize. Are there any other questions about lesson three? Well then, I think we are ready to go back to lesson two. And I think rather than going through every one of them in lesson two, I think we should focus on whatever somebody has a question about. Although well, I'm I didn't know I had questions till you went through all of them. <laughs> so well, okay, when you went through all of them, I found I had made some mistakes that I didn't know I made. <laughs> okay, well, let's try going through all of them for lesson two. La Unua de Mando, a healthy boy drinks warm milk. Sana Canabo Trinkas. Arman Lacton. Bone. Tre bone. Very good. Sana Canabo Trinkas. Barman Lacton. Okay, La Dua Demando. The new shop sells dry cakes. La Nova Boutico Vendas Sekain Kukoin. Yes, Sekain. Sekain, yes. kukoin. Sanova Boutico Vendas Sekain Kukoin. Kukoin. Okay, la tria demando. The big teacher met the new friends. Uh, la granda intruisto reconis la nova nevoin amacoin. Amicoin. Amicoin. Um, yes. La granda. Instruisto rencontis la novine amicoin. Okay, numero clar. The good friends will make a beautiful cake. La bon, mm, la boni amicoi faros belon kukon. Yeah, the verb. Faros, future tense. Faros, Faros. Yes. F-A-R-O-S. Yes, it's F-A-R-O-S. Yes, but notice that it's something that's difficult for English speakers to get, that that one verbal sound will make the difference between the present tense and the past tense. <laughs> if you just said Faros, it's present tense. Faros is future tense. Okay, so that's one of the points they want to make in this lesson. You need faros. Oh, okay, the cleaner demando. And the small girl met the ugly sister. 
La Mal Grande Knabino Rincontis La Mal Belain Fratinoin. Bone, tre bone. La Mal Grande Knabino Rincontis La Mal Belain Fratinoin. La Sessa Demando. The healthy brother had wet paper. La sana frato havis mal secan papero. Bone, tre bone. La sana frato havis mal secan papero. Numero set. The new shop sold bad lemonade. La nova butico, 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 no, butico. Vendis malbonan limon, limin don. Limonado. Limonado. Bone. La nova butico vendis malbonan liminadon. Numero oak. Mother will wash the small cups. Petrino lavos la malbrandoin tatsoin. Bone. Patrino lavos la malbrandoin tatsoin. Numero now. The small boy carried the new bread. La malgranda canavo portis la novan pan, novan pano. Bone, bone. La malgranda canavo portis la novan pano. Numero deck. Cold water doesn't wash a small boy. Albarma akvo ne lavas malgrandan nabon. Bone. Malvarma akvo ne lavas malgrandan knabon. Numero dec. Dec uno. Pardon, dec uno. I forgot my pen. Me for for Jesus for Jesse's me on Prumon. Prumon, yes, bone. Me for Jesse's me on Prumon. It's harder well, for me to pronounce it than it is to write it. <laughs> yes. Well. Um, <laughs> I think that's a problem for everyone because the, the problem is we need to get accustomed to the sounds that the Esperanto letters make. It's not always the same as what we're used to in English. Okay, I think we are now we're ready for deck do. We don't have sugar. Ni esta hava sucaron? Sucaron, yes. You have to remember the accent is on the next to last syllable. Ni, ne hava sucaron. Oh, deck tree. My husband requested warm milk. Nia edzo petis. Varman lacto. Bone, bone, bone. Mia Edzo Petis Varman lacto. Numero dec far. Now we've got this problem with old again, but let's just assume here that it means someone that we've known for a while. Her old friend didn't write. 
Tia Malnova Amico Nescribis. Bone. Tia Malnova Amico Nescribis. Is it ne? How do, is it spelled? How do ne. you spell ne? Ne. 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 So, vi rin contos iliain mal unain amikon. Yes, I'll mal no rein. Again, we've got the problem with English. Oh, yeah. Vi so, <laughs> rin contos iliain mal no rein, I'll mal unain amikon. But notice, this is an important point. You notice how it's difficult. If you're not a native English speaker, how do we know what old means? It's just ambiguous in English. So Esperanto will often be more precise, more clear than English. Okay, numero deck says, she will have the warm water. She havos la varman akvon. Bone akvon. Yes. She havos la varman akvon. Yeah. Havos. Okay. And in fact, that, you know, is another problem in English when you say a short A. What is the sound of a short A in English? Well, sometimes it's ah, but sometimes it's ah, like in cat. So it's very difficult for non-native speakers to figure out how you pronounce the English because it isn't always the same. You don't know a short A, how do you pronounce it? Okay, that set. Your new teacher forgot your paper. Via Nova Intruisto Fogesis Nian Paperon. Paperon. Paperon, yes. Bone. Via Nova Intruisto Fogesis Nian Paperon. Bone. Deck Oak. The boys hate. Our new teacher. La Kanaboy Mal Amas Nian Novan Instruiston. Bone, Bone. La Kanaboy Mal Amas Nian Novan Instruiston. That now they sell tea and coffee. They. Ely. Ely. Ely Vendas. Ely Vendas. Teon. Kai Kathom. Bone. Ely Vendas. Teon. Kai Kathom. Kai Dudek. We shall sell her cake. And his pens. <coughs> Ni vendos shian kukon kai liain flu moi. Bone. Ni vendos shian kukon kai liain flu moi. But there's a little bit of a problem here, even in English. Yeah, it doesn't, you couldn't tell, I don't think. Yeah, Her. what? 
notice if I accent it a little differently. We shall sell her cake and his pens. Now I made her into a indirect object. So how would we say that in Esperanto? We shall sell to her cake and his pens. Can you use that? Um, can you I'll, use that? I'll she. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, in this case, I'll. I'll she to I'll. her A L oh, is what I'll. You I'll is what you need. Oh, A L means to. Do we know that word? <laughs> I'm not, I don't know that word. You had it yet. Right. But I'll means to, and it's used rather frequently uh, to your house, uh, to the store, a la vendeo. So here it is, the indirect object. Me vendos al she kukon kai liain lumoi. And it's just al she because you don't have to turn a pronoun into a something. You don't have to. No, because here you've got a prepositional phrase. In fact, this is one place where English is easier than Latin. <clears throat> if you get into the grammar of it, but not completely, because in English, what's really happened here is the word to has been left out. It really says, we shall sell to her cake and his pens. But in English, we often leave out that preposition to. Notice what happens if I say, he gave him his keys. He gave him his keys. Whose keys? Is it his own keys or the other person's keys? And how do we make that distinction in Esperanto? In Esperanto, if it refers back to the subject of the sentence, you use another pro pronoun that don't we don't have in English. It's sia, sia, or si, not. It's just s i she si si refers back. <coughs> Me vidas. Uh, it won't work for first person. Li vidas siain okuloin. Or li vidas iliain okuloin. Either he sees his own eyes or he sees the eyes of another man. In Esperanto, you would make a distinction between siain si si okuloin and liain okuloin. Siain okuloin would be his own eyes. Leine Okuloin would be the eyes of the other man. But as you can see, English can be ambiguous. And that means that when you're trying to translate from English into Esperanto, you can run into some difficulties because you can't figure out exactly what is the meaning of the English. <laughs> Is the preposition to left out or is it not left out? Where were the days and the months? In lesson two? No, they were in they were in another handout um, a while ago, I think. The original four page handout. Oh, oh page right, right. Four. Oh, okay, yeah. Bottom left corner. All right. Now those original four pages yeah, are I, extremely important, and you should look back at them over and over and over again.
There they are. That's where they are. Odiao. Mm -hmm. Odiao. Okay. So, Odiao is today. Odia. Odiao is yesterday. Odiao is on uh, Duolingo a lot. <laughs> Odiao es is Jaudo. Morgao es is Vendredo. Fiero es is Mercredo. In fact, maybe we together should say the days of the week starting with Monday. Lundo. 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 Mardo. Mercredo. Mercredo. Jaudo. Vendredo. Vendredo. Sabato. 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 Imancho. 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 Now, to remember Sunday, this is the re result of the influence of the French Esperantists. Dimancho is what? It's the day of the mass, the day when you eat God. Oh. Dimancho. Ah, Dimancho. Dimancho. And Sabato is, I'm not sure, but I think it's from Yiddish. Sabato for seven. But we seven. have it in English when we talk about people going on sabbatical, a sabbatical leave, which is every seventh year. Yeah, every the day. Well, sabato is a word for seven that is in many different languages. Sabbath. Yes, like the Sabbath. So I think our time is up, Donna. I don't know that oh, it I'm is. Yeah. Stay right now. I'm glad that you are doing so well. And I do want to emphasize again that in the lesson today and next week and the next week, the big thing are all the new words to learn. The vocabulary is the main new thing that we have to deal with. So what do you want it for next week? We should um, read for lesson four and do the, the answers to the page, third page again. Yes, exactly. Read it ahead of time. Remember, these lessons were originally part of a correspondence course. So people were able to read the lesson, do the exercises, and send the exercises to the teacher who then would correct them and send them back. So I did not originate these lessons. They were already done, in fact, decades ago. I don't even remember exactly how old those correspondence courses are, and maybe 50 years ago. Oh, which might explain, I don't think I've seen Plumo for pen. Isn't scribilo more common these days? Uh, scribilo is a writing instrument. Yes, and I've seen that used for pen. I don't think I've really seen plumo in anything modern. Well, plumo <laughs> is a pen, but it can also mean a feather of a bird. So it has two meanings, even in English. Plumo, uh, even in Esperanto, can mean either a feather or a pen, because at one time that's what every pen was, <laughs> was a feather. Okay, so we'll meet again, same time, same place, next, uh, next Thursday, lesson four. And, and thank you all for doing such a great job. And especially Donna, thanks to you for getting this set up. It's not easy. And especially, I don't know about the rest of you, but I am just swamped with email messages. Everybody has lots of time to send email messages. Dave, were you gonna say something? Your hand was up. 
I would suggest anyone who uh, has any questions just to stay on after everybody else goes off and Ron can answer their questions. Okay, I'll stop the recording now. Good idea. I'll stop the recording.